Hello, I hope that you are having a beautiful day and that you're ready to rock and roll. We have some hard hitting, bittersweet facts to face right now. Taking a look at the bright side, today's Led Zeppelin day. We get to consume their brilliance and artistry and I'm always over the moon for that. On the flip side, today we're closing a very powerful and impactful chapter. Track one of side numero cuatro, we have Night Flight. They kicked the song off with an absolute bang. A split second, solely focusing on the percussion, right? We have those drums and then they completely burst through the sound barrier, flooding in all the instruments at once. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Narrowing our focus on the percussion alone, it felt like that went on its own individual journey with the layering of the new beats in different sections. We had this very bright and piercing element that existed in the high pitch. Its presence was especially felt every time it was removed. And that first removal of that element was so impactfully satisfying since it went hand in hand with the unfolding of the chorus, which was itself so sonically refreshing since it kind of ventured out into new chords. characters that I feel are the true driving forces of this song. We have all the stops and starts, the sort of communication happening back and forth between the percussion and that high pitched element that are just working in tandem to create this really fun atmosphere. Oh! such a playful and lively nature that came through that was immaculately paired with the brightness of the sounds of the musicality and the instrumentation and the chord sequencing. Okay. I think it felt very, very major. Love to take a look at the mixing of things and hear how some elements feel like they're pushed to the back, pushed to the front. Everything felt very, very forward, very in our face. Okay. When it came to the vocals, we had a very, very delectable rasp and I felt like it leaned into a sort of human-made distortion. Okay. And At number two tonight, we have the wonton song. Okay, immediately they did an absolute 180 and provided us an inundation of minor chords. It was a little bit hard to place it at first though because this was delivered in the most rock and roll way possible. Normally with minor chords, there's a sense of gloom, dreary, somber, melancholy sadness. You get it, sorrow. Here, none of that is detected. Definitely not anything slow or dreary. No, here we got loud, we got punchy, we got emphatic usage of the percussion. I just love the way that it's played. I, I just realized that songs driven heavily by percussion the way that this one is don't normally lend themselves to the minor. At least nothing I can recall at the moment. I gotta say I'm impressed. Thank you. Yeah, and I gotta rethink this whole thing. Piggy 
piggybacking off of our comments off of the last track where I felt like the vocal was very forward in the placement of the mixing of the track, it feels like here we have the opposite happening. We have that man-made distortion still coming through brightly, but it feels like it is aided and abetted by um, some filtering or mixing down in the engineering. It feels like uh, the voice is being pushed under. However, the explosiveness is still coming through as if it was right in our face, which is causing this kind of broken radio effect, like really, really cool. That line right there, that guitar solo, that electric guitar was just so mesmerizing. And I can't even believe I'm gonna say this because of how harsh the sound is, but it was quite gorgeous. <laughs> This one was true rock and roll paradise. Like I've never heard a minor chord driven song be truly through the usage of the percussion, the um, riff and the motif that would end some of the phrasing pandemonium. At the dead center, we have number three, Boogie with Stew. <laughs> Okay, we have some keys activity. There's a bit more simplicity coming through with this one. There is still a uh, brightness shining through, but it's a little bit more raw and acoustic and dare I say, a little folksy country-esque? Ain't nothing better than farm fresh egg for breakfast. This plucked nature is coming through. I love the way this track also painted a very vivid picture. However, it is a completely different picture from the one that they had previously drawn up for us. Here, it feels very very rustic, kind of on a, a porch in the countryside at afternoonish, just having a jam session. And it's worth noting how they strategically placed the seventh chord in this track, almost like a secret weapon, scarcely used, but every time one was dropped, its side effects were monumental and its impact can be felt ringing through the rest of the track, even while all the other chords are going on mostly major, but the fact that the seventh would come around the corner, you know, you felt that impending sense of seventh coming on. And after it was released, you had that kind of aftertaste as well. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Numero cuatro y penultimo tenemos Black Country Woman. I can sample it. Not even, yeah. Me, 
this song is so interesting because it feels like every single element is existing in its own world. There's this cohesiveness that is not happening. There's this fusion that's not fusioning. It, it, it's not it's not going through it feels very disconnected and discombobulated but i feel like that's the point of this song and that's the character and through that it's a lot of fun um personally it's hard for me to connect to this song at all because of everything that's going on but something very very interesting to note that this is our second 180 of the night where we just spoke about how they sparingly used the seventh chord in the last track. And here it feels like the primary concentration in terms of musicality and musical direction and movement is just through sevenths. And that's adding to the discombobulated nature of this song. <laughs> Credit must be given where it's due. And even though this vocal might not be my top pick, you gotta admit that there were levels, there were textures explored, and it showed quite a range. There was some humor incorporated, which is very difficult to do and keep professional. I did enjoy this thoroughly. I think that will never be a problem with this track. This track will always come through as fun, but there are some nights that this is just going to be a no for me. And there are some nights where this is gonna be a super yay. Today, it's not a super yay for me, but it's also not a no either. It's just, I was expecting different for our second to last song. I, I was expecting different. <laughs> she was different. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> for our very last song of the night, I am going to not learn from any of my mistakes and I'm going to have the highest of hopes and place every single expectation I have for them to just bring it home. And how could I not with a title like Sick Again? I, I already like this song. I, I don't even need to hear it. I love it. Good night. Okay, it was just an ad that scared me. <laughs> yes. That miniature ramp up to a slight climactic explosive moment was so cool. I hope that that's a bit of some foreshadowing for what's to come. This electric guitar is literally electricity. It is the lightning cutting through the thunderstorm that is the percussion. That's what's happening. I can't believe the album is over. What? But what a satisfying ending. That, that was everything I wanted it to be, honestly. I was wishing for some rock and roll. Sick again. Was this one of my favorite moments on this side? Yes. Would this normally be a favorite of mine from another group or another album? I don't know. Probably not. Does that make any sense that this is, in all honesty, my favorite of the side? Makes no sense, but I never make any sense. So you just gotta take my word for it. And maybe my feelings on it may change because I'm very wishy-washy. 
I flip flop a lot, but um, but that's how I feel right now. This isn't the end for us in Led Zeppelin. You know, we live to fight another day. Uh, we live to love another day. I think that that's a little bit better. We will continue to listen and indulge in their divine music. But in terms of physical graffiti, yep, that's it, we're done. And now for a special moment of appreciation for our ravishingly stunning and extraordinary Super Thanks heroes. Much love to AP, Mr. B, Jerry Manas, Marissa Martinez, Swedish Jeff, Kevin Corkill, and Ed Myers. I love you guys. Jerry, Marissa, AP, Mr. B, Kevin, and Jeff, accept my words, know my heart is yours. I'd rearrange the sky for you, so the stars would align for you, and everything would be fine for you. And since last week we introduced the idea of having a special super thanks Easter hero, I'm going to be incorporating a new special super thanks hero of each new video. And for today we have AP. Thank you so much for being our extra special astonishing super thanks hero. Here's a little number just for you. I hope you think this is a little bit more fun having two tracks instead of one, these fun little tunes at the end. Um, but you let me know if you think this is a bit more redundant. I think that it just provides a new challenge and presents a little bit more variety, but let me know your preferences. I also think this is a fun chance to, you know, give individual praise and recognition because I love each and every one of you guys so very much. I am so, so, so very grateful and want to fully display my appreciation and my gratitude because I love you so much. <laughs> Until next time, drink lots of tea, read some poetry, and take it easy. To put an end to a chapter this sensational is kind of emotional.